Hey, what's up, y'all? It's JS Method, or Coach JS, you guys may know me as, and today we're doing a fundamentals video on very early game jungle tracking and how this relates to using your first ward as a mid laner. Um, this also applies top lane, just not as much. You're worried about slightly different things as top laner, so mostly from a mid lane's perspective, um, early jungle tracking and how that relates to placing your first ward. So let's get into it. The first thing we want to think about um, with jungle tracking is what type of jungle the enemy is going, the enemy is like, what is their identity? So how are they going to clear? There's a couple of different junglers. Um, the first thing we have to ask is like, can they gank at level two? Like, like, okay, so let's, let, let's create a little list of things to think about when we're thinking about jungle tracking. First thing is here. Let me make this a little smaller. Let's go, um, champ identity, right? Because if they have a Shyvana, right? Like, let's say this team has a shy. She's going to full clear, right? And she's not going to get in ganks if it's not on her way where she's clearing, right? But if this team has a Shaco, well, Shaco's going to gank right after his buff, right? He's going to gank at level two. So that's an example of different types, right? We have we have the level two cheesers, right? These are like your, you know, your Shakos and your Twitches and your Zinzows and your J4s. Twitch, Zin, uh j4 these kind of champions right you have your full clearers your full clear oh that's a little bit hard to see maybe maybe we'll write with pink uh for the rest of this we have our full clearers full clear these are your shyvanas your belveth um belveth your master yees your hecarums these kind of guys then you have your high tempo guys high tempo and their whole thing is that they clear very quickly um and they have terrain scaling. So these are your Graves and your Nidalee and your Kindred um, and your Kane, like these kind of guys. Now, these guys are kind of like a mix of in-between. If you're playing against a full clear jungler, you know that you probably don't have to worry about a level two gank, right? So that's why this is important. You know, wherever they start, they're going to do all of their camps on the way. And they're only going to fit in ganks when they're crossing over or when they're at the end, right? So if you know they start bottom, well, perfect you can just lean on this bot side all the way until it takes them to clear their camps. Perfect. That's all you have to do, right? But if we're playing against one of these early game level two junglers, um, you have to really respect the potential that they could be in your, your lane right after a, uh, you know, right after their buff or right after a three camp, right? So, um, you have full clear junglers, you have high tempo junglers, and then you have everything in between, right? So champion identity is the first thing we're going to ask. And then we kind of have to ask what clear is likely, right? Um, what clear? So let's talk about a couple of different clears. We have, um, we have a full clear. We have a five camp. We have a three camp. And then we have a level two gank. These are kind of all of the first clears you can do. Um, and basically what they all are, you know what? Maybe here, I'm just gonna erase some of this so we can draw on the map here. What a uh, full clear is, is when they start one of their buffs and then they just do all of their camps, that's a full clear. These end around three, you know, it, it depends on who the champion is, anywhere from, you know, 315 to 330, somewhere in there, right? Depending on the champion and depending on how good they are at clearing, that kind of thing. A five camp is exactly like a full clear, except they're going to skip one camp, right? So one, two, you know, let's say they do this. This would be a five camp where they skip this camp. Um, a three camp and these end around the same time, depending on the champion, whatever, maybe a couple seconds shave off. Now a three camp is when they do three camps into a gank. Now this very commonly is buff, gromp, buff. So this is three camps, right? And then they're going to gank. Now this is tricky because this gank can come out as early as 230. So 230 is like one of the most important timers that we have to ward for. So we have to pay attention, can they level two? But if they can't level two, 230 is the first most important timer we have to ward for. Uh, so I'll just write need vision. Now this is because they can either three camp into gank, three camp gank, or they can gank when they cross over, right? So let's say they're doing a full clear but they just clear their bottom side, then they can gank you, right? So we actually don't know with a lot of these junglers what side they're going to gank from, even if they start bottom, because you don't know if they're going to full clear, then gank you like this, or if they're going to do a three camp where they do a three camp from the bottom side will look like buff, raptors, gromp into gank, right? 
So, uh, all right, crossover. So, as a mid laner, we really need our first ward to come down by 2.30. If we don't have vision down by then, that's a very, very big problem. So, the first thing we ask is champion identity. The second thing we ask is how do they clear? And that's going to decide, what, you know, when we place down our first ward. Um, and then, if you know the side that their buff started on, right, let, let's say they start bottom, buffs take five minutes to respawn so you know it'll be back up five minutes after they take it, it spawns at 130 it'll be up around 650 they'll be back on the side they started on so these are kind of the timers that i want you guys to pay attention to 230 is really important because you need to have your first um your first ward down by then 315 is important because that's when crab comes up and it's when full clears tend to finish so we have to be ready for a full clear gank by then any jungler in the game can gank pretty easily around 2.30 and pretty easily around 3.15. And then 6.50 is important because that's when their first buff is coming back up. So you can kind of keep track of what side they're going to be on then. Um, so these timers are super, super important for basic early game jungle tracking. Um, okay, so we talked about asking what champion identity is the enemy going. So what are they likely to clear by? We asked what clear are they likely to go. Now... We have these timers down. What else do we have to think about? Okay, how do we place our first ward and where do we place it exactly? So now we get a little bit more into the matchup. Um, my general rule is if you have priority and you're going to win wave one and two, so you're gonna have priority and you're gonna crash it, um, then I will crash the second wave or I'll place it in between the second and third wave, place it by 230, right? Which happens to be in between wave two and three wave two and three for mid lane so at 2 30 in between the second and third wave i will go drop my vision if i have priority i really like this vision because it helps you um see where they've been if they've been on these chickens and then you can lean on this pocket otherwise this is a good spot because this helps you see if they're coming to gank you down this way and it sees a little bit into the river this is a really good anti-gank ward um if you want to ward on the other side, because that's where your jungler is at and you're planning on playing on the bot side, then just this ward or this ward or this ward are all good because then you can see if they're getting you from the river. Again, that unlocks you standing in these pockets. So that's where I'm placing my first ward at 230 if I have priority. Now, if I don't have priority and let's say I'm playing like Kiana into Victor and they're just pushing into me, then I'll actually either save my first ward until I get the bounce back and uh, on the bounced back wave, whether that's wave three or four or five, then I'll place vision so I can lean out here and play aggressively. Or I'll place my vision before the lane starts at 129 up here. And at 129, I'll drop the word here. And what this does is it will show you um, if they start red, it, it'll show you where they go, right? Because if they start red, they'll walk down and, and you'll see it. If they start blue, as the ward is dying, you'll see them walk on this and you'll see what they did there. So that's good for jungle tracking. You get to use your ward even if you're getting pushed under. So those are kind of the two scenarios. If I have priority and I'm playing aggressive and I know I'm going to push the wave, then I'll wait until in between the second and third wave, I'll go place my ward. If I'm getting pushed in, I'll wait. Um, I'll either place it before lane or I'll hold it and save it till after. I think both can be good. Um... Let's see. So we talked about, yeah, understand what the enemy jungler wants to go. These timers, again, it's 230, 650, and 315. These are the most fundamental jungle timers in the game. You guys really want to get these things down. We really want to be respecting where they can go because of this. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I'm missing. I think that's it. I hope you guys appreciate this video. This is very fundamental early game jungle tracking. Make sure you guys are doing this. If you're not doing this, you can just lose games to getting early ganked or early cheese like this. So make sure you guys are getting this done. Super important fundamental to make sure we're, we're cranking out. I appreciate you guys watching the video today. Come back tomorrow. Leave any feedback in the comments. Have a blessed night. Peace.